Hello everyone, I'm Chris Erickley and welcome to another edition of the P.E. Crime Blotter, a weekly look at crime here in the Inland Empire. We begin with crime headlines. In a brazen attempt to rob the posh Bellagio Casino, police say a wig-wearing Nuevo man was arrested after he tried to spray a blackjack dealer with pepper spray and grab $115,000 in gaming chips. 24-year-old Michael Belton of Nuevo was held in Clark County Jail on robbery, burglary, and conspiracy charges on Monday, May 21st. The AP reports that Bellagio workers grappled with Belton on the casino floor before he surrendered the chips late Saturday night. Each of the 23 multicolored chips was worth $5,000. Police say Belton's wig and sunglasses fell off during the fight. The AP also says the jobless Belton told police he attempted the robbery to help his ailing grandparents. A Beaumont police officer said he feared for his life when he shot a woman in the face with a high-powered pepper spray gun in February, according to Riverside County Grand Jury transcripts released last week. The transcripts say Beaumont police officer Enoch Clark told investigators that he was retreating three feet away from an argumentative woman who may have been driving drunk, despite a dash cam video that shows him shooting pepper spray in her eyes less than a foot away. The double-barreled shot of pepper spray sliced her right eye in half and fractured her orbital bone. Her left eye's optic nerve was also severely damaged, leaving her permanently blind. Clark and his attorneys were not part of the grand jury proceedings. He pleaded not guilty to all charges. A former San Diego police officer and his wife have been convicted of a felony in a 2010 trashing of their foreclosure home in French Valley. Robert Conrad Acosta and Monique Avet Acosta who had worked as a real estate agent, were found guilty of stealing fixtures valued at more than $65,000 when they moved out. The Acostas had taken out nearly a $700,000 mortgage on the home. Prosecutors said they gutted the kitchen, poured dye on the carpets, pulled out and cut wiring, smashed decorative stone of the exterior of the home, and more. The couple is scheduled for a sentencing in July. A judge called a convicted killer's murder of an 85-year-old Good Hope man, quote, chilling and horrific, before sentencing Eusebio Ferreros to death for the 2008 murder of his neighbor, Lupe Delgadillo. Ferreros was convicted of murder with a special circumstance of killing and commission of a robbery. The same jury recommended in March that he face the death penalty instead of life in prison without parole. The California Supreme Court is reviewing the defense of a second man, also charged with murder, Juan Ramon Coronado, who is still awaiting trial. Lisa Michelle Barden, who was convicted of 275 felonies related to prescription drug fraud in 2011, could be headed back to jail. The doctor received a suspended sentence of almost eight years, but was required to serve only about a year. But on Saturday in Corona, she was arrested again on suspicion of falsifying a prescription. Expect a hearing soon to see whether her probation will be revoked and her sentence reinstated. Well, that does it for this week's headlines. Coming up next, In Depth. It's now time for our In Depth segment. We're discussing a story from earlier in headlines. A Beaumont police officer facing charges after a February DUI stop. He got in a confrontation with the woman, then fired a pepper spray gun at close range to her face, which resulted in her being blinded. I'm now joined by Press Enterprises' John Asbury. John, after the grand jury report, there's been a lot of discussion about the way the gun was used. Right, and we got the grand jury transcripts last week. Uh, they recounted three days of testimony to the criminal grand jury, which led to the indictment of Beaumont Police Officer Enoch Clark. Uh, at the heart of that argument was both how the gun was supposed to be used and also a dashboard camera that captured the incident on video. Now, Clark and other officers were trained to use this gun, which is called a JPX, and it uses a uh, what they call a whiff of gunpowder that propels pepper spray at 400 miles per hour, but it's only supposed to be used at five feet away or a larger distance. Now, the video and authorities clearly said that, in this case, Clark used the weapon at 6 to 10 inches away from the woman's face, 
uh, the result of which severed her right eye and also fractured her orbital bone. It also uh, severely damaged the optic nerve in her left eye, leaving her permanently blind. John, since this incident, the uh, Beaumont police have also stopped using the gun. Right, and police were actually using this, what they've said was sort of a, on a trial period. Uh, they've used it since May 2010, and it was initially marketed from a company in Switzerland and uh, for actual civilian self-defense. But since this incident, Beaumont police have taken it out of use of force and uh, are just, they still carry a pepper spray on their belt along with tasers and guns, but otherwise uh, are not using it pending further review. And going forward, what are the charges that the officer faces and, and how, how do you see this playing out? Right. Clark is charged with four felonies. Um, his defense attorneys say that this will all uh, come down to perception and uh, the actual intent that he was using the gun in the line of duty to defend himself. Clark actually said that he felt his life was in danger when he handcuffed a woman and had her pinned over the hood of his police car. Um, he's set to be in court again next Tuesday, and uh, we may see a trial sometime later this year. All right, John, thanks for joining us. Be sure to keep us updated on the latest in the case. That does it for this week's in-depth segment. Coming up next on the docket. It's now time for our on the docket segment. We're taking a look at the big court cases here in Riverside and San Bernardino County this week. Joining me now, as always, Press Enterprises' Rich Dietley. Rich, the first case we're talking about, one that most people are pretty familiar with, that is Earl Ellis Green. Right. This week we're in the penalty phase of the trial. Green was convicted by a jury uh, earlier this month of first-degree murder in the slaying of Riverside Police Officer Ryan Bonominio. Now it's up to the jury to decide whether to recommend a death sentence or life in prison without parole. The prosecution has uh, its case this week. It's presenting anything that they can about whatever acts Green may have committed during his life uh, that were criminal, violent, or uh, threats of violence. And our next case involves a boy who was 10 at the time of the crime. The boy is facing charges for murdering his neo-Nazi father. Right. National Socialist Movement leader, uh, chapter leader, rather, Jeff Hall, was slain while he was sleeping. Boy was 10 at the time, 11 now. There's been issues over his competency. Uh, we'll see what happens when he appears in court later this week. And finally, a case uh, from Redlands involving a murder back in January 2011 that left two young men dead. Right. It's a slaying that shocked Redlands. It was a group of young men inside a Redlands apartment uh, playground complex that were fired on. There are four defendants in this case. Three are charged with first-degree murder. Uh, one as being accessory after the fact that three have been identified by police as gang members. And uh, there's a court hearing uh, in advance of a uh, preliminary hearing. All right, Rich, thanks for joining us. That does it for our On the Docket segment. Coming up next, Off the Beat. It's now time for our Off the Beat segment. We're taking a look at a couple of the lighter crimes from the week. Two suspects in recent burglaries were captured after not so evasive maneuvers. In Valley Vista near Hemet, a car believed to be leaving the scene of a burglary crashed into a Riverside County Sheriff's vehicle during an attempted traffic stop. The driver, 35-year-old James Conrad, fled on foot. He was detained after a brief struggle. His two passengers were also arrested. And finally, in Marietta, a man suspected of taking patio furniture from outside a store was spotted at gas pumps across the street. When police tried to contact him, he drove away at 40 miles per hour to his home. 53-year-old Dirk E. Hole was arrested on suspicion of grand theft, committing a crime while on bail and other charges. Well, that does it for this week's Off the Beat segment and also wraps up this week's P.E. Crime Blotter. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.